in today's video, folks, we are going to learn about the definition of dawn. Seriously? You have to use that sound effect? Bruh. Dun, dun, dun. You gotta be kidding me. If we summarize that 13 pages scrum guide into a single sentence that describes the overall objective of scrum, it is to continuously improve the scrum team's effectiveness in delivering one or more done increments consistently every single sprint. The done increment is a tangible form of what the customer can use and what might be valuable for the customer. That's why the done increment is very important in the context of Scrum. Every element in Scrum exists to increase the Scrum team's capability in delivering done increments every single sprint. Now, before the revised Scrum Guide was published in November 2020, I had already made a video about the definition of done, which I intentionally made to compare the definition of done to the acceptance criteria. Because at that time, I noticed some people thought that the definition of done is just another term for acceptance criteria. And when I flash back, I'm so glad that so many people found that video has improved their understanding about the definition of done. Now, it's for me, in the past two years, my understanding about the definition of done has also improved. So, in today's video, folks, I will share with you my learning about the definition of done and how it relates to enterprise agility right after this one. Hey, what's good this week, awesome people? I hope you're having an awesome week so far. Joshua Portugui here, delivering another content on Scrum for you from my home studio in Brisbane, Australia. Besides explaining the definition of done, which is the commitment for the increment, in today's video folks, I will also answer frequently asked questions on the definition of done and increment. This is going to be a lengthy video. And that's why I have placed chapter markers to make it easier for you to navigate through and revisit today's video sometime in the future. Please check out the chapter markers for this video by hovering the video player. Alright folks, let's get back to the definition of done. As I mentioned earlier in today's video, from my personal observation, the definition of done is often misunderstood as acceptance criteria, while the increment itself is a term that's not easily understood by some people at a first glance. Now because of this reason, in today's video, I will try to explain the definition of done and increment in layman's term using food products as an analogy. But first, I need to borrow a commercial kitchen. I'll be back with you in a minute. Just stay there, don't go anywhere yet. Excuse me, chef? Yes? Can I borrow your kitchen? Why do you want to borrow my kitchen? So, I want to make a video on the definition of done in your kitchen. Say that again? Definition of done? Please. All right then. But that's going to cost you a lot of money. I have already negotiated with the chef and luckily I'm allowed to borrow her kitchen to explain my next point. Now the reason why I want to shoot this part in a commercial kitchen is because I want to use a food product as an analogy to describe the definition of done. So I would like to use the context in Australia. So here in Australia, before a kitchen in a restaurant can deliver a food to the customers, there are food health and safety rules defined by the local government that needs to be followed by that kitchen. Otherwise, the customer may be food poisoned, and even worse, the restaurant itself may get sued by the customer. Not only the food must be cooked according to the rules and regulation that has been defined, the kitchen itself must operate according to the rules and regulation defined by the local city council. And every month, there would be someone from the local city council who will do monthly inspection to ensure that these rules are being followed by the kitchen. Now, when a restaurant sells the food, they have an intention to get the customer coming back again in the future. So the food should not only be cooked according to the rules and regulation defined by the local government, it must taste great. Otherwise, the customer may not ever want to come back again in the future to that restaurant. Some chef may even have the standard that the food must be cooked using organic ingredients. And some chef may even have standards that the food should be delivered to the customer at a perfect temperature. Top quality chefs may even go beyond the norm and have standards on how the food should be presented on the plate. And they even have a standard on how the food should smell when it is served to the customer. 
So this is an example of a whole definition of done for a food product before a food is delivered to the customer in a restaurant. This part on the definition of done keeps the restaurant out of trouble, while this part in the definition of done keeps the customer coming back to that restaurant. All right, folks, back to the studio again. I hope from that simple analogy, you can understand what is the definition of done. Now I'm going to talk about the definition of done in the context of digital products, because that is the context where a lot of scrum teams are in. So just like how everyone in the kitchen needs to have a shared understanding how a food is considered as done and ready to be delivered to the customer, the scrum team developing the digital product along with their stakeholders must also have a shared understanding on the whole effort that is required to deliver a releasable product increment to the customer. Wow. That was quite lengthy. Because developing a digital product is more complex than delivering a food product, there are more checkboxes in the Scrum Team's definition of done. The definition of done for a digital product should contain all of the types of testing required to be exercised towards the product. Now, my suggestion to you is to write down every type of testing explicitly in the definition of done. Because from my personal view, every product requires different kinds of testing. For example, sometimes a product may require a smoke testing, while other types of product don't really need a smoke testing. Some product may require penetration testing, while some products don't really need penetration testing. If we don't explicitly write down every types of testing required to be exercised towards the product in the definition of done, both the scrum team and their stakeholders do not have a visibility on the amount of effort needed to develop a digital product. Because developing a digital product is not just writing a bunch of lines of code. If the scrum team is developing a digital product in a regulated industry, Activities that need to be done to satisfy the regulation should also be incorporated in the definition of done. This includes updating all of the documentation that is required by the regulators. This aspect in the definition of done keeps the company out of trouble. Some products also require usability, accessibility, and visually appealing user interface. In some cases, the user interface should also follow the corporate brand guideline that has been defined by the marketing department. This is quite common in a company that develops multiple products. By having a consistent brand guideline that is applied to all of the products in the company, the user will get a consistent user experience when using the product from this company. But user experience is not only about visuals or what can be seen by the user. It also includes the performance of the product itself. In some cases, the company requires the product to load the data and to display it on the user interface under a certain threshold. So these performance threshold that the product needs to satisfy should be explicitly defined in the definition of done. These aspects in the definition of done keeps the customer use the product again and again. Not only should testing, documentation, and user experience should be defined in the definition of done, technical excellence practices should also be written down explicitly in the definition of done. Some scrum teams may already be doing DevOps practices and they may have technical standards such as the percentage of the code that should be covered by their unit test. And these aspects can also be written down in the definition of done. The scrum team may also want to define the coding standards that should be followed by every software engineers in the scrum team. The scrum team may also define the action that should be done when there are broken builds in their continuous integration server. The scrum team may also want to define the standards on how the product increment should be packaged before it is delivered to the customer. Should it be containerized? Should there be any release notes in the package? Etc. Now, these technical excellence aspects can improve the development process sustainability in the long run and can improve the product internal quality. The point I'm trying to make here is the Scrum team needs to make the quality measures as transparent as possible in the definition of done. In fact, as defined in Scrum Guide, if there isn't any definition of done yet, the Scrum team is responsible to create it. By having this transparent definition of done, not only there will be shared understanding within the Scrum team, there will also be shared understanding between the Scrum team and their stakeholders on the effort needed to develop releasable increments consistently every single sprint. Communicating and making the definition of done as transparent as possible for everyone in the company is important in a large enterprise context because I have seen it from time and time again how some non-technical people assume that to deliver a digital product only requires adding a few lines of code and to accommodate their request should not really take a long time. And as you have learned from my other videos in this channel, this kind of misunderstanding is one of the reasons why developers end up being a feature factory and having burnout. In some cases, 
This misperception from their stakeholders is what causes the developers to cut corners and leave technical debt in the product, which can result in a more painful oh, development no. effort in the long-term future. You can make every Scrum Team's definition of done in the company transparent on a digital tool like the company's internal wiki or in a physical large poster that is stuck in the Scrum Team's room. Alright folks, now that I have shared with you what is the definition of done in the context of digital product development, let's see how the definition of done is different to the acceptance criteria in the context of Scrum and how the two actually relate to one another. Acceptance criteria is a term that is more commonly used in a software engineering context. If your team is not developing a digital product or not developing a software product, acceptance criteria may not be relevant for your context. And that is not an issue at all because Scrum is a framework for product development, not specifically for software development. In the context of Scrum, acceptance criteria refers to the conditions that needs to be met so that a product backlog item can be considered as functional and usable by the user. So as we can see here, the definition of done applies to the whole product increment, while acceptance criteria applies for a single product backlog item. That means every single product backlog item may have different acceptance criteria from one another. In the Scrum Team's definition of done, they can have a checkbox that states every acceptance criteria in every product backlog item must pass before the whole increment can be considered as done according to the definition of done. That means if one acceptance criteria in one product backlog item is not met, they can say that the whole increment is not done. It's as simple as that. It's either done or not done. There's no such thing as half done or almost done. Done is according to the definition of done. As written on Scrum Guide, the definition of done is the Scrum Team's commitment on the quality measures that they will pursue every sprint. Because the definition of done is a commitment, the Scrum Team uses the same definition of done every single sprint. Just like how the Scrum Team uses the same product goal every sprint, until that product goal is achieved. And as some of you already know, product goal is another Scrum Team's commitment. Go check out my video on the product goal if you haven't watched it already. The definition of done communicates to everyone in the Scrum Team on what are the quality measures that should be applied towards the product they're currently developing. What kind of testing the team needs to exercise towards the product. Because as we have learned earlier, there are a wide array of testing in product development contexts. Does the Scrum team need to practice test-driven development, for example? How high should the code coverage be if they will practice test-driven development? What legal aspect that the Scrum teams need to follow as such that the company will not be fined by the regulators? What kind of documentation that the Scrum team need to keep up to date? What should the visual design look like? Is there any corporate brand guideline they need to follow? What technical excellence or DevOps practices that they need to do as such that the internal quality remains high and the product development process is sustainable in the long run? If the Scrum team keeps on changing the definition of done from sprint to sprint, not only people in the Scrum team will be confused, their stakeholders will also be confused because their stakeholders won't really know what done really means. Having a consistent definition of done is not only useful for the current Scrum team and the stakeholders, it'll also be valuable to any team members who will join the Scrum team in the future. Because when a new team member joins the Scrum team, they can just ask for the team's current definition of done to see what are the quality measures that the current Scrum team are following. Now, if the definition of done keeps on changing from sprint to sprint, newly joined team members may be confused because they don't know the high quality standard that the Scrum teams follow. Because the definition of done is a shared commitment amongst the Scrum team on the quality measures that they want to pursue, and as defined in Scrum Guide, the Scrum team is accountable for creating a valuable useful increment every sprint, Therefore, the whole Scrum team has a shared ownership over the definition of done, including the product owner and the Scrum Master. The Scrum team maintains the definition of done as such the quality of the product increment delivered every sprint is consistently high. As written on Scrum Guide, the developers are accountable for holding each other accountable as professionals. Therefore, everyone in the company should also respect the developer's professionalism, specifically when the developers refuse to accept any request that may jeopardize the quality of the product. The Scrum team can only be professionals if they are are respected as professionals by everyone in the company. So don't expect to see professional developers in our company 
if developers' professionalism is always overridden by political power. In the context of Scrum, the scope of the functionalities to be developed or the timeline to deliver the product should always be negotiable. But the quality should never be a negotiation point as lowering the quality of the product may damage the company's brand image in the market in the long run. Now, even though the Scrum team has ownership over the definition of done and they're the one who's maintaining the definition of done, according to Scrum Guide, the development organization where the developers work can also trickle down the corporate-wide standards to be available in every Scrum team's definition of done in that company. Besides the development organization, other departments like marketing, compliance, legal, risk departments can also request to the Scrum team on certain quality measures that need to be incorporated in their definition of done. For example, as we have learned earlier in this video, the brand guideline or the regulatory documentation requested by the regulators, etc. Now that we know what done means in the context of Scrum and digital product development and how the definition of done is used in the company, an interesting concept in Scrum, but not so easy to digest for people who are new to Scrum, is the relationship between product backlog item and increment. In the context of Scrum, one or more product backlog items can form an increment. The Scrum team can deliver more than one increment per sprint. Now, I'm going to hold off and let you digest this concept for a few seconds. Each of these increments must be at a releasable state as defined in their definition of done. So, in the context of Scrum, releasable increments are not only delivered by the Scrum team at the end of the sprint or one day before the sprint review. Otherwise, the Scrum team ends up in doing iterative mini waterfall instead of Scrum. And as you have learned from my previous video, iterative mini waterfall is not healthy for the company. You will commonly see Scrum teams who already practice DevOps and continuous delivery practices are able to deliver multiple releasable increments before the sprint review. Now, I don't want to muddy things up, but I think this is really important to mention in this video. Throughout this video, you may have noticed that I say the Scrum team is required to deliver releasable increments. Now, notice how I say deliver releasable increments instead of release the increment. Now, the reason why I said that is because in Scrum, even though the Scrum team is required to deliver releasable increments every sprint, they're not required to release the increments to the production environment every single sprint because there are business factors that need to be considered when the organization releases the product increment to the production environment. That's why a releasable increment does not mean releasing the increment to the production environment. Having releasable increments every sprint, even though it's not required to release it every sprint, gives confidence both to the product owner and the developers about the integrity of the product's quality. And that's why this is important in the context of Scrum. And here is another interesting point that you need to keep in mind. And I hope you're still hanging on in there, folks. I do acknowledge that this can be confusing for someone who is new to Scrum. Now, as you have seen in the previous video I have uploaded to this channel, if the company wants to get the most out of their Scrum implementation, it is important that the company select the right person to be the product owner, that is, product owner who is entrepreneurial. For an entrepreneurial product owner who is aware that their Scrum team always deliver releasable increments consistently every sprint, they may want to release the increment to the selected or limited customers only. Some of these customers that they have already selected may also be required to sign a non-disclosure agreement, and the product owner may have already worked with the legal department on this aspect. These entrepreneurial product owners release the increments to selected customers because they want to validate their own hypothesis and they want to see evidence-based management metrics to be generated in real time on their EBM dashboard. Folks, I'm sure you noticed I mentioned DevOps several times in this video already, and hopefully you can see how using Scrum together with DevOps in the context of digital product development can improve the whole company's state of agility. Now, for Scrum teams who already define DevOps practices explicitly in their definition of done, some of the techniques they use for releasing the product to selected groups of people are feature flagging or canary release or launch darkly. And of course, I'm aware there are many other techniques for releasing the product increment to the production environment only to be seen by limited customers. So folks, the point I'm making here is 
The sprint in Scrum is not a release cadence, it's a planning cadence. The Scrum team can release to the production environment multiple times within a sprint before the sprint review because as defined in Scrum Guide, the sprint review should not be a phase gate for delivering value. The Scrum team can also release after several sprints and they may choose to do that because there are business factors that need to be considered when releasing a product. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the whole objective of Scrum summarized into one sentence is to continuously improve the Scrum team's effectiveness in delivering done product increments consistently every single sprint. As the sprint is the heartbeat of Scrum, the definition of done should be inspected in all of the Scrum events. During the sprint planning, the Scrum team uses the definition of done to help them decide how many product backlog items they can gauge into the sprint. If there are more checkboxes on their definition of done, most likely they can only take lesser product backlog items than if they have less checkboxes in their definition of done. Now, from my personal observation, the stakeholders may not be happy when they see the Scrum team only take lesser product backlog items every sprint. And in some cases, the stakeholders may want the Scrum team to take as many product backlog items as possible. And as you longtime subscribers of this channel already know, that misperception is what's caused many Scrum teams to end up being a feature factory rather than a team. And as you longtime subscribers already know, this output-oriented mindset is how some Scrum teams end up hating Scrum with passion. That's why the Scrum team should communicate to the stakeholders in the company that even though they take lesser product backlog items every sprint than what the stakeholders expected because their definition of done is more rigor, the quality of the whole product will be higher and most importantly, the long-term product development will be more sustainable. By having a more rigorous definition of done, the Scrum team are avoiding themselves from having technical debts that will make their long-term development sustainability even worse. And besides the definition of done, of course, there are other elements and other facts that the Scrum team uses during sprint planning to help them decide on how many product backlog items they should gauge. Check out my video on sprint planning if you haven't watched that video already. Now, during the daily Scrum, the Scrum team uses the definition of done as a checklist whether the product backlog items can be moved to the state of done in their product backlog management tool. But of course, the Scrum team can change the state of the product backlog item to done if it's already done according to the definition of done at any time during the day. And as we have learned earlier, if the Scrum team found one or more product backlog items can form a releasable increment, they can release those increments to the production environment even before the sprint review. Because once again, as defined in Scrum Guide, the sprint review should not be a phase gate for delivering value. And as we have learned earlier, folks, the Scrum team may want to release their increments to the production environment before the sprint review because they want to validate their hypothesis. And at the same time, they want to see the metrics displayed on their EBM dashboard earlier before the sprint review. From my personal observation, many people assume that the sprint review is just another term for user acceptance testing sessions. According to Scrum Guide, only the increments that are done according to the definition of done are discussed during the sprint review. Now, if there are acceptance testing sessions that are required to be done, so the increment can be considered as done, this session should be done before the sprint review. And in those kinds of scenario, the acceptance testing should be explicitly mentioned in the definition of done. Several Scrum teams have already automated their acceptance testing, and those kind of sessions are not needed for this kind of team. For Scrum teams who already release multiple increments to the production environment before the sprint review, they should share their EBM metrics during the sprint review to the participants of the sprint review. From my personal experience, Presenting EBM metrics during sprint review is one of the most effective techniques to engage the senior management. Now, of course, just like the sprint planning, there are other elements and artifacts that need to be inspected during sprint review besides just the done increments. Go watch my video on sprint review if you haven't already. Now, during sprint retrospective, the Scrum team will inspect whether there are additional checkboxes that can be added to their current definition of done that may improve not only the quality of the product itself, but also improve the whole product development process. This may include adding more automations into their definition of done, for example. So, my job in this video is done. This has been quite a lengthy video and therefore, I would like to thank you for watching today's video until the end. 
The definition of done is such an important element in Scrum that is often overlooked by many Scrum teams. I hope after watching today's video, you gain a better understanding about the definition of done. And I really hope after watching this video, you can come up with a list of actionable items for improving your company's state of agility. I've already made a video that elaborates how your company can measure the state of agility by looking at the Scrum team's current definition of done. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already folks because I will upload more videos in the future on how to use Scrum beyond the mechanics to improve the enterprise state of agility. And before you leave, don't forget to click that like button down below if you found today's video has helped you improve your understanding about the definition of done and Scrum in general. I will see you in my next video folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now.